So if you really think about what we have done when we talk about sovereignty around models, data privacy, data security, the first thing that we have done and unlocked is the infrastructure play. Humane Chat today is hosted in a sovereign infrastructure for both inferencing and training. So this is really unique. We're leveraging our own te technology, our own data centers to deliver the services to the consumers in Saudi. And um, uh, the other thing, when we build this model, I mean, obviously the, the large language model, what I do believe uh, wholeheartedly on is quality over quantity. So the quality of data sets, data sets that are proprietary, you cannot find on the public internet sources, data sets that understand religion, culture, politics, it has the right guardrails. It really understands the values of Saudi and the Arab culture and it, it, something is super exciting is, is the fact that this is a completely uh, built from scratch on models that are not distilled, whether it is a llama or a deep seek. Um, I'm happy to see the development and advancement. And this is, I think, will be a first in the region where you have the total stack from infrastructure model and the application layers around this model to be able to offer this to consumers. Truly, this will be our first B2C product, and we're really, really excited about what the team has accomplished. And I could not be more um, happy and proud about these achievements. So take me inside the user experience here, because as I understand it, it's not just modern standard Arabic. Humane Chat can also deal in dialects and cultural nuances, as you were just explaining. So expand on that for me. How did it get to this point? So I, uh, I will tell you, you know, an interesting story. I mean, by heritage, I was born in Amman, Jordan. I lived all my time in the U.S. So when my team showed me what they were working on, I said, look, if it passed my accent, and my accent is slightly broken Arabic. Um, so I, I will tell you, we support today 15 different dialects in the, in the platform. And we were focused on training it both on uh, different voices, different dialects. We do all speak the same language in this region, but we also speak it with different dialects. So the diversification of the data sets that we have uh, gathered and the di diversification of also the training voice data that we had to uh, obtain. Uh, to me, I'm really happy um, of what has been done. So above um, uh, the model itself, it is called Alam. Uh, Alam was really started an incredible entity in the Saudi government called Sadaya. What they have done is utterly hats off to see a government entity to do this. So the transition of Alam and its team to Humane is was the beginning and the catalyst of how we build and continue to enhance um, uh, this model. And at, above Alam, what we build is the application layer that we call Sautak. Sautak today is used as a simple use case. When you go to the courts of Saudi Arabia, the transcripts of the courts, the recording, the actions, it is no longer a human being typing these court proceedings. So this is just one simple thing of many things you could build on top of this foundation model. And what benchmarking have you done around just how accurate this is? How accurate is it? Is it as fast and as accurate as OpenAI, for example, or is this particular model still a little bit behind? You know, I mean, uh, uh, in order to get fairness, uh, and this was really important uh, for me to achieve an independent view about the model, I actually have hired a, repu a reputable company that is really building a, a frontier model. I hired Kohir. And I tasked him with one thing. I said, without any bias, you know, please benchmark what we have built and give me an independent view. And I knew, um, factually speaking, I knew that we still have a lot of ways to go and a lot of data sets that we have to train. So when you look at what we have achieved in benchmark, um, Kohir showed me a report that puts Humane Chat second in the world in terms of accuracy, in terms of speed. And I will tell you in speed largely because the inferencing infrastructure we use I tell you what we have done together with a startup called Grok to deliver inferencing is just remarkable, the speed and the response of the platform. So my approach uh, to how we launched this in Saudi market, we have achieved, um, you know, I would consider it to be a great achievement that Saudi in terms of the Arabic dialect, the Arabic content is, sec is ranked second in the world. The next step is how do you really continue to enhance is to gather the feedback from the users in the market I want everybody in Saudi to feel very proud about a Saudi-created product, so we, I want them to use it. 
I want him to give me feedback. And this is a constant journey, as you know, we will improve the model. It will not be perfect. We've done a great job where we have achieved today, but we still have a long way to go to achieve my desire and a goal. It has to be the best Arabic LLM in the world. And this is really, really important for myself and the team.